So whether you are brand new to Webflow or a super experienced Webflow developer, there are possibly some things that you may have missed when working within Webflow and more specifically the Webflow CMS. And the reason for that is the Webflow CMS is one of the most, if not the most powerful feature in Webflow. In fact, in my years as a technical consultant with Webflow and specifically teaching and training Webflow enterprise clients, one of my favorite topics to teach about and to train teams was about the Webflow CMS because it is so powerful and so comprehensive that you can do so many powerful things within Webflow. I just realized that I've been saying power and powerful so many times in this intro. But anyway, let me give you the eight tips that you probably didn't know about the Webflow CMS. Now, the first tip we're going to discuss is you can actually use the video link field to embed things such as tweets, LinkedIn posts, or things like that. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we go to Webflow, we'll go over to the CMS right here and go to insights. And notice I already added a link embed field right here. Now, you can also add these uh, link embeds or even a, a standard embed uh, by putting a rich text. So you can do a rich text field and put uh, an embed there. But check this out. We can put a video link. So in order to do that, you just go over here um, or click add field um, and click video link and go ahead and do that. So we added a link embed field in this particular collection, which is kind of like a blog post. Um, now, of course, you can add video links to this. So if you put like a YouTube link um, or a Vimeo link, that particular uh, video will pop up. But if we were to instead put a tweet, so for example, if I go to this link embed and I go ahead and go on Twitter and say, put this, fire tweet just a quick plug in to follow me on twitter um and then i'll go ahead and paste it right here notice it's go it goes ahead and generates the actual embed and not just a link to that uh particular tweet so we'll go ahead and save it and then we'll go over here and i'll go on the bottom and i'll add a video so we'll add a video not in there that looks weird so let's go ahead and put it say up above it and I'll just put a quick margin under the bottom. All right. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to link it to the embed. So we'll go ahead and link this particular embed here. Link embed. There you go. And notice now we have the tweet right there. I can even modify this width if I want it to be max 360 pixels goes right there if I want to make it um, 480 pixels uh, just something like that so maybe not super particularly useful but if you have a client that uh, wants to be able to put YouTube videos or embeds or things like that um, or, or post embeds they can go ahead and do that using the video link field now, another tip that you may not know about is using the Webflow CMS to put snippets, uh, dynamic snippets of text within custom code. And that can be very useful when working with marketing teams or working with um, uh, CRMs where you have different types of forms. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So there's a website that we worked on where the customer required, ha they have these um, resource downloads where uh, they have different a different HubSpot form for each and every single download. So as you can tell, I mean, as you may think about, there's a lot of resources here. We don't want to have it where you have to uh, embed a, a new a new embed or go to rich sex or, or something like that and put a new embed every single time. So what we realize is actually when you go to the embed, the uh, when you actually get generate a HubSpot form embed, the embed code is really all the same. The region, the portal ID, the source, everything. The only thing that's different is the form ID. Now, of course, if this is all from the same HubSpot workspace or the same HubSpot account, the form ID is the only thing that will change. This um, uh, uh, points or, or signifies to HubSpot which exact form to pull from. So what we did instead is we went ahead and put a form ID snippet inside the code so we go over here all i did was delete the old form id whatever form it was 
add a field, um, which in this one we put form ID, and now it will dynamically place that in here. And all the uh, team or the, the marketer or whatever it has to do is they go to the HubSpot, they go to the main resources, and they would go to the, the actual resource and notice where it says uh, form ID right here. All they have to do is copy the form ID and paste it over here and it will automatically generate that exact form. It's really the same concept that you can do with whenever you go to the page settings and you go to the title and let's say you want the title to say like the company, the company name, and then you want to put the uh, title of whatever this resource is, you can then put that right there. This is really, really powerful. In fact, a friend of mine and I was uh, trying to look for some use cases for a pretty big company on how we can use the Wealthful CMS for their use case. And we found out that they were actually using um, uh, a team in order to generate landing pages that have particular graphs. And what they would do is they would actually create these, send them the data for the graphs. And then that team would then take about a couple of weeks to come back and generate a new graph for them. Well, what we did is we actually grabbed that code, whatever code they use for the form. We placed that in the Webflow CMS and we went ahead and took out snippets like, for example, uh, that tells us how many columns, um, how many rows, how many, uh, uh, what colors are we using for these graphs or, the, or whatever data. And then now we created a graph generator uh, using the Webflow CMS. So the Webflow CMS is super powerful once you unlock that knowledge that you can put custom code, dynamic text snippets within your custom code. Now, the next tip is actually pretty simple and a new feature in Webflow. And that is making sure that you're non-indexing or you're not indexing pages in Webflow that shouldn't be indexed. By, and what we mean by index is being crawlable in Google, being crawlable by Google's robots, which is yes, not in 2024. That is a statement that is for real. Okay, so let's go ahead and go there. Uh, go to the page settings and go to something like an author's template. Now, why do why do we want to make sure that this one is not indexed? Well, a lot of times we'll work on collections in Webflow where say say like a blog post similar to this, where you'll put some sort of author, right? Now we want to, in order to do that, in order to make that simpler, we want to create a um, a reference collection. So then therefore we create an author collection where we have our different authors and therefore whenever you want to select an author for the insights, all you have to do is select whoever the author is. Well, the author template doesn't particularly have a page. It's a blank page and we don't want this page to be found on Google. Now you may say, well, there's no content in there. Yeah, I know, but just in case. Now before we used to have to do it where you would put in a code here, which it says like, you know, no index, uh, meta, robots, no index, or something like that. Um, and there's this exact code for it. You can still do that, or you can go to robots text and disallow it. But Webflow now made a new feature where you can go over to the page itself and just put here that switch this off to prevent this collections item pages from being published. So it could be a page that you are still working on, you don't want people to find, or a page just like this, which is purely used for reference. Go ahead and turn that off. That is just good general practice. The next one is super simple, that you may be looking at me like I'm insulting your intelligence. And if I am, I am sorry. But here is a quick tip. Whenever you go to CMS, it's good practice to go ahead and uh, title your CMS in a way that is easier for whoever you are working the project, working on the project for. So let's say it's for a client. You want to go over here and go to the CMS. And if it's something that's like for reference or something like that, why don't you go ahead and put the title as something that a client can come in and say, okay, this is something that we probably shouldn't touch because it's something that's related to some sort of reference or system. What I usually like to do is I'll go down to the title and I'll put a title like this, system, and then put a hyphen. This is helpful because the title on the collection name doesn't actually matter. This is only seen by whoever has access to this project. The URL doesn't change, nor do any of the basic information. So we can go ahead and put that there. And what I usually like to do is I'll put that over here in the bottom so then the client will look at this and not 
touch it. What you can also even sometimes do here is put emojis on the title. This is also helpful when you have a major website, such as one that we worked on where the client had blog posts and white papers and eBooks and case studies. There are so many different collections that they need to work on. So we put emojis so that they can kind of quickly identify uh, whatever collection they need to work on. It's just helpful uh, to make it make your client's life a little bit easier. The next quick tip is how to stylize rich text when it is connected to the Webflow CMS. Let me show you what I'm talking about. When we go to a Webflow project just such as this one, sometimes usually it's a blog post. Uh, we go over here, we put a rich text. Now notice I'm not able to edit how it looks like. If I go over here, even if I edit the style, we're, we're not even able to uh, uh, specifically click like the paragraphs, the headings, the bullet list, and all of those things. So what we actually want to do is we want to go to a page and usually you would have some sort of, and just good practice to have a style guide page or something like that. Now you can put that in the style guide page. That's usually the best practice for it. But if not, you can create whatever page really, any separate page for that. And you want to, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and create a rich text. So go ahead and put an element of rich text. And let's say we want to put a class. This is very important. Put a class on this rich text. So we want to name this, say, uh, rich text. Okay. Then now you're able to style your headings, your H2s, your paragraphs, however you want. Now let me show you what I'm talking about. If I go to the paragraph right here, we're going to click this style selector. We're going to say all paragraphs. Now be careful. Don't just stop there. All paragraphs, but nest selector inside rich text. Notice what it says. All paragraphs when nested inside of, of this class called rich text. So if I go over here, and let's say I want to change this font to um, something cool like Grand Vibes. Of course, we love this font, right? It's Grand Vibes, or Great Vibes, Grand Vibes. But we'll go over here and go to Insights Template. And I can change this class. Instead of paragraph, it will be a class rich text. And notice now, you, you, you feel those vibes generating because there are great vibes in this rich text. The next one is another recent addition by Webflow, which has been a game changer, especially for bigger companies who want to retain their URLs when they move over to Webflow uh, for SEO purposes. Here is what I am talking about. So now you can actually add categories to your CMS collections or C yeah, CMS lists. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So notice here, I added a collection called works. Now we have here a CMS uh, called uh, projects. Okay. And notice here the URL is just unfinished CC project project page. And even when you go to the page itself, projects is simply just that. Well, now I can actually place this particular pro uh, project list under the works folder. And notice the folder now changes. Uh, the URL changes work slash project slash the item slug. In fact, you can even keep going. I can go over here and create a new folder called say fintech. And we even want to categorize the different types of work. So we'll go uh, grab this folder, place it under work. So now you have a subfolder under fintech. You can put static pages and CMS pages. So I can go over here, click projects. And now we want to go ahead and place this under fintech. And notice, look at that URL, work slash fintech slash project slash item slug. So if you like multiple URLs, go ahead and eat your heart out. You can now do it in Webflow. Now, the next one is when working with images or image sizes specifically in the Webflow CMS. Let's look into that. Go to the Webflow CMS. And whenever we need to place images, usually on like a blog post, on a cover image, we can actually use, uh, we can actually set the image sizes within Webflow. So if you were to go to this insights and go to these settings and go to the main image or the thumbnail image, either one, we'll go to the settings of this particular setting. And we can set minimum image sizes or minimum image widths, minimum image heights, uh, maximum image size width or height for your particular images. This is really useful when you're developing websites for clients and or a team usually will have different people like copywriters or even guest writers inputting the blog post, but they're always putting images that are too big or too small 
or well usually it's too big like an, an image would be you know three megabytes even though webflow allows it we definitely should not do that so you can set a maximum image size so let's say you want to be a little more lenient and set your image size to only 200 kilobytes um therefore that if someone uh Go ahead, goes ahead and tries to upload a picture that is around 300 or 400, even one or two megabytes, Webflow will not allow it so that you are able to retain good SEO with your blog post. You can even do that with image widths and image sizes or image heights if you kind of figure that out. Let's say it's a cover image is supposed to be landscape and people are trying to put you know, uh, vertical pictures, then you can set a particular um, minimum image width and minimum image height to make sure that it becomes a landscape uh, type photo uh, or maximum and, and all that stuff. So that's going to be pretty helpful when working with clients who have multiple team members. Now, the last one is going to be super simple, but yet really key and really important when delivering projects to clients, and that is using the help text within the Webflow CMS. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If we were to go to Webflow and go back to the settings of whatever collection you're working with, and you go to that particular field and go click, um, click the settings, let's go ahead and put some help text so that people or collaborators, editors, people that are working on your blog are able to, uh, uh, you're able to give them some advice or some, uh, to avoid confusion. So for example, with the images, let's say someone is, keeps putting three megabyte, four megabyte images within your team and you wanna stop them. You can go ahead and use the image size fields. Yes, you wanna restrict it. You can also do help text, for example, only, upload images under 100 kilobytes and let's say you want to call them out let's say it's simon i don't know why the name simon popped up in my head but simon call out simon simon keeps uploading images over 100 kilobytes well simon we got you right here notice says right here simon only upload images under 100 kilobytes don't worry no one else will see that only your particular client or your particular team. That's also helpful when you're working with other things. Like sometimes these blog posts can get pretty complicated and you wanna make sure that you tell them, hey, do not post here, do not put this here, only post here. If you have multiple rich text or whatever, use the help text. Be a good team member, be a good Webflow developer and help your team out, help your client out by using the help text in the CMS. And that concludes the eight tips that you didn't probably didn't know about the Webflow CMS. Or maybe you already knew them, but that's okay. I hope you learned something. Now, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, do me a favor. If you have a tip about the Webflow CMS that someone may not know about, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. Go help somebody out. Somebody that was at your particular spot of knowledge two years ago, three years ago, go be someone really good and help them out in the comments below. Thank you for sticking it out up until this end part. Once again, my name is RR Abrat. I'm the founder at Unfinished Studio, a wealth expert agency that works with companies at the startup and at the enterprise level, build innovative and creative websites. We post a video about web design, web for tutorials, every wednesday so wait me wednesday wednesday so make sure you stay tuned have a great week peace